Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV. As you can see, we are on location today. Yes, we managed to get out of the office for the day, driven up the A34 to visit our very good friend, Mike Hurst from Red. Some of you would know Mike from some of the BMTVs and the training that we have done before. So Mike has made a decision to close his shop. However, he's opened his new studio. So we're gonna go in, talk to Mike and find out a little bit more about his thinking as to why he's done that. Come on, let's go. Mike, hello. Hello, Greg. How are you doing? Good to see you. How are you? How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. So, this is your new place. It certainly is. New home. It's it's fantastic. I love it. There's a, there's there's a lot to see and a lot to look at. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than the old place. Yeah, yeah. I love I love the little farm location. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. nice. It's nice. really really quiet and yeah. really nice and quiet. Well, anyway, thanks for, for letting us come and have a look. Um, why? Why? Because you had a shop before, didn't we did, you? We did, yeah. yeah. Um, let's tell everybody a little bit about your story. So you've had a shop. Yeah. You've had it for how many years? So we had various different shops for five and a half years. Yeah. Started in a very small unit in a courtyard of six or seven shops. Yeah. Um, moved from the smallest one to the next size up. And then after two years, we got a proper shop yeah yeah a sort of high street location yeah um and then yeah we spent three and a half years there um but you decided to move away from it yeah you? we, we outgrew it basically yeah so so was it not to do with the high street no not taking a nose I mean, dive or anything I mean, like that obviously that is in the back of your mind but yeah. ultimately we we needed something bigger yeah it's just the, the sheer space that we have yeah um, being able to prep a job several days before and just have it sat in the corner yeah. ready for a weekend so yeah. for example this weekend just gone we had a massive quick link arch with 12 gumballs we then for the evening on saturday we had a giant organic demi arch yeah in the shop that just would have taken over everything um so yeah having those preps ready to go on saturday just to load in the van and having the big roller door as well so the van can come straight in yeah out we go so what's the sort of plan are you uh, do you allow people to come here and see yeah you? so it's we we're not a shop we're not operating standard shop hours yeah um we have various hours where people can come and get their walk-ins um we're trying to push the click and collect and deliveries more than anything on the website okay um so i'm, I'm not expecting people just to roll up and buy a single five pound foil balloon yes yeah. not what we want anymore the the model of the business is changing I remember you saying to me sometimes on a quiet day, you might be in the shop yeah. and just do a few single foils, yeah. but you're still getting your bookings for decorating. Well, yeah. for your bookings for decorating, you don't necessarily need a shop. Exactly. Obviously, a lot of yeah. people that do decorating work from home. Yeah. So this is, I guess, that that next level it where is, you've, yeah. you've I mean, got the space. We, we're kind of doing it backwards, really. A lot of people start or home or from a, a unit like this and then sort of aim to have a high street shop. Yeah. We bit the bullet very early with the shop. Um, benefit from it um, and it's put us in this position now and we're, we're seeing the last three years in, in the main shop as a just a big advert yeah which got us out there and known so, yeah. yeah but I guess this is, gives you a bit more flexibility from exactly. a personal yeah. point of for, view exactly Be rather than having to we employed someone in the shop um, for a year or so um, up until I was moving and he was great it meant I could go out and do um, deliveries and mm -hmm. consultations on site um, and networking meetings that sort of thing and know that I didn't have to close the shop because the young lad was in there yeah and he was great um, but I think we just needed something a bit different yeah um, so I can go up the road to Milton Keynes which is now only 25 minutes away yeah um, to do bigger networking events and that sort of thing yeah so, yeah I, I I think it looks great. I think what you've done Thank you. is is fantastic. But I know that you like your little innovations. Yes. And I know yeah. you like to create solutions yes. for things. So I'd like you to... Not necessarily when they need to be <laughs> no, uh, But uh, in the long run, they yeah. normally end up yeah. beneficial, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, but I know that your, your pumps is definitely uh, not required by yeah. the way you, you create those. But yeah. I, I just wanted to actually talk to you a little bit about some of those innovations. So do you want to show us a little bit yeah, sure. more about what, you, what you've what you got? Yeah, um, I mean, should we go behind the counter? Yeah, let's go behind the counter. So to start with, Mike, tell me 
Tell me about your tins. I, uh, I do yeah. see on Facebook a lot of people saying, how do you store your yeah. balloons and all of that? And I think this is this is great. But tell me tell me about these tins. So the tins I've had uh, for years and years. Um, when Jane set up Reds, when it was just a face painting business, yeah. I set up the Ginger Tea Company. All right, okay. Um, so we were buying tea in bulk, blending, mixing, selling it. Um, and we basically had a six month race between us to see whose business would succeed. Yeah. And ultimately one would take over. Yeah, okay. And hers won, yeah. which is why I stole the business, yeah. <laughs> to make it feel like a victory for me. Um, and yeah, the tins were left over from when I used to sell the teas out in, in tins um, and just printed the labels of what the balloon is inside. So you you buy a bag of yep. whatever these are, happy, not got my glasses on, happy christening. Yep. And there they are inside. So I guess this stops them from oxidization and stuff yeah, like it that does, as yeah. well. Yeah, and I can fit in one of these, I can fit about 50 in the smaller ones. And a push, I can get 100 in the big ones. You get 100, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's like a lot bit of... Um, and you, you've got something written on the bottom? Uh, yep, yeah, just reorder product code. Oh, so clever. Look. That's so clever. And it looks so neat and tidy. So when your your customers come in, even though it's not a retail environment, yeah. it's still... Exactly. I mean, when I, when, when I just walked in there, this, this looks like a shop. It really does. It I, wanted to, I wanted to sort of maintain um, the appearance that we had in shot because I loved it. I loved how we were set up. So, as you know, ultimately we were, we started as a Qualitex balloon boutique. Yeah. Um, the wall was fantastic. It was its own little advertising board, really, yeah, yeah. Um, as people walked in the shop because it looked stunning. Um, and I just wanted to take that in. And it's, it's also our stock room. Yeah. So rather than having balloons in drawers all over the place and then having to thumb through to find an 18th out of a set of potentially 50 balloons yeah it just seems ridiculous to me um yeah. so having everything as i'm working at here turn around grab one off the shelf yeah. same with that i wanted everything here these were behind us in the old shop um so everything was always at hand but now having the whole lot together yeah it just makes my process of getting a an order out quicker yeah. i think sometimes people don't think about processes yeah. when they're doing it uh, and something I've always really liked. I'm a big yeah. fan of processes, yeah. making it easier because as we've always said, time is money. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you've got to account for your time. And if your time involves walking from here over there to grab a balloon to come back and yeah. then inflate it, if it's there, it just it's saves you exactly. seconds, yeah. but that, that adds up. Yeah, those, those seconds are massive in the grand scheme of things. So these jars, yeah. these are slightly different. Uh, those are just uh, sweet shop jars, just off eBay. Yeah. Um, they're dirt cheap. Um, Every now and again, I have to buy a few more because we add more products. They just look so neat. I yeah. see some of them have latex balloons on top. Yeah, so they, cause they've, they've got a flat side um, and in the shop, they would sit out like that. Um, I still might have them again. I'd see a lot of them. That's probably about two or three years old. All right, okay. <laughs> and it it's just, had a good life. It needs, it needs changing. <laughs> um, but yes. Yeah, so I suppose, yeah, that makes really it easier, yeah, easier for customers, but you don't need Also to. as well, I found when you've got the latex over the lid, so not for the 100, as the latex folds under the lid there, it forms a really tight seal. There's uh, no oxygen getting in there. Yeah, There's nothing. Yeah. It's, That's it, great. It preserves the life of the balloon, I've noticed. Yeah. So obviously those ones are covered. There's nothing there. Yeah. And then that, yeah, definitely helps. No, I love it. Now I see something else that you've got here yeah. that people normally use... It's a, it's a knot stand, a yes, knot lamp. Yeah. And you've used it for something completely different. I, I just different. like using knot lamps in everything, anywhere, really. <laughs> um, then, yeah, it's not just a balloon stand for me. So, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. So you've just taken a few sections or a couple yeah, of sections. Yeah, so you've got uh, two sections at two. Might be three. Maybe three. Three sections. Um, just some cheapy hooks from Wix. This is all, it's all very rough. It all needs painting still. But, but still, the idea is there, and then yeah. it's just... Prepar and even if you were working from home and you had a space to do your work, yeah. this, this would just yeah. save so much time. And even the little bits on the end, um, it's an M14 nut. If I'm M14, right. yeah. M14 it's nut. Not, it's not there the best fitting, but it's the closest I've found to, to put a stopper on it, because these ones, they, I need to order more, yeah. but they slide off. Yeah. I only found those last week. So they were an eBay job as well, because none of the non B and Q or home base go up to M14. Oh, nice. They go to M10. So there you go, M14 nut to screw on your knot lamp. That's, that's, that's a good tip right there. Right, what else have we got here? Oh, look at your, your, your measuring for your, for your bouquets. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that, that came from initial um, in-house or in-store Qualitex training. That's yeah. something that they 
they sort of show you. Yeah, we see that in the fundamentals training yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah, so just having everything measured out, ready, so that I know that if I'm doing a stack of bunches of threes as much as I dislike them, if 10 of them are going out for tables, every single balloon is the, the correct height. Yeah. So when we first started, we'd, we'd tie each balloon on the ribbon, and then we'd get the weight, and then we'd be adjusting yeah, and doing yeah, this and this. Yeah, being there. Having, just having that, it's, it's so simple. It and is it's, such a simple technique. Yeah. When I first saw Mark training that at the fundamentals yeah. training, I was like, wow, this, yeah. is, this is so and clever. And then everything's color coded. So the green one is a, just a standard bunch. So they're set um, to do up to a, a um, bunch of five. Yeah. We've got a classic display, which is one of our most popular ones. It's three latex, two foils. Yeah. And they're um, seven inches apart. Yeah. Um, got the blue ones, which is a luxury or, or a layer. So two layers of three latex, then a bubble on top. Okay. Um, and then the, just the black single one is just for large foils. So yeah. if we're doing lots of number, single numbers, yeah. we know that they're all going to be the same height. That's brilliant. So Mike, I see, I see this down here. This is... Yeah. Now I know what this is. Mike and I are both members of PIBA, the Pro Environment Balloon Alliance. And we had a meeting the other day, and you mentioned this. Yeah, this is an eco brick. Um, Tell us a bit more about that. So I found out about this last summer. Um, I did a job with Natasha uh, Norden, um, and she mentioned that she was doing them. So basically, it's called an eco brick. The website is ecobricks.org, I believe. And the idea is that you fill um, a drinks bottle with plastic. Okay. Um, and then you fill them to a, a, a particular weight, and then they're used in the sent all over the place used basically as bricks um they get oh, right. cemented in and they can make walls out of them um it's, oh, right. it's a it's, it's a really clever idea i'm not can be, like i said I've, I've only just got into doing it yeah. um i'm not fully registered yet but yeah. once i am I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we can supply a lot so you'll notice in it it's bubble wrappers there's bubbles that have had holes in them and gone down so it doesn't matter ribbon. What kind of plastic or what's yeah, in there? Yeah, but it's any type of plastic. They don't want anything um, sort of biodegradable. Okay. Um, so I'm not putting any latex in it. So actually um, they, they want things they that want are going to last. They want things that are going to last, exactly, yeah. Um, there's no metals allowed. Um, I need to check with them to see if where foil balloons fall yeah, into it because yeah. I know they're not, they're not metal balloons. No. But if, we can, if foil balloons can be used in this, it'd be amazing because the waste that we get from the foil balloons rather than going in the bin can get, contribute to something like this. It's really great. And again, the bubble wrappers and the cellophane off the outside of the packets. Yeah. Um, I think that the sooner balloon manufacturers get away with that plastic wrapper, the better. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and just have a cardboard wrapper. Um, but this is a good alternative. Oh, definitely, yeah. This is great. Yeah. And I noticed that you've got red at the bottom. So they ask that the bottom one is sort of, is a, a normal color. So we, these are just leftover plastic bags from the shop. Yeah. Um, so we, we're red, so I'm going to use a red bag. Of course. Um, just to show that what ours are. Because when they're being put into a wall, they like uniform colours. Yeah, yeah. I really like that idea. I'll have to look at it. I'll put the web address up on the on the screen yeah. and you can you can have a look at that. But I've not heard of that before, mm. so thanks for sharing that. Now, also, we talk about recycling, we talk about the environment. Yep. There's a lot of that being talked about at the moment. Reusing. Recycle, reuse, yeah, reuse I mean, something else. I like or... to reuse things wherever I can. Yeah. So, for example, I mentioned the high float bottles. Yeah. Um, I don't like throwing these away because they're really great containers. Yeah. So I use mine. If I get this, this is my. It's an old protein powder box. Okay. So this is basically my sand store. So when we buy the um, kiln dried sand. I don't like having the big bag hanging around yeah, because yeah. We used to, it used to get kicked over and sand would go everywhere. Yeah. So I now use a um, high float um, bottle just to store the sand, uh, just to keep this topped up. Um, I think out of one kiln dried, I think you'd get about five of these full. Okay. So How'd you get it in? Just a funnel? I would, just a funnel, yeah. yeah. Um, actually, yeah, it's an old Coke bottle. I've had the, Course, reuse, top, reuse, yeah. yeah top, love it. top cut off, and then coke bottle goes in, and then pour it in. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just just little things like that. Yeah, it's... no, I love it. I think I think that's really really good. Now there is something. So you've got a balloon with stuff written on it. So the, this is my inspiration balloon. I I'm notorious for forgetting things yeah. constantly. Um, Jane hates it. Um, I hate it. I've tried apps and all sorts and task managers and everything yeah. like that. And this is a new thing that I brought into the studio. So 
this is the, the second balloon I've had. One has been completed. Okay. Um, so basically, oh, the idea of it is I write three things, three main ideas that I want, and then separate tasks underneath. Um, it's half high floated, so it's going to last about just up to a week. Yeah. Um, and the plan is that once it gets below that level, if I've still got things not crossed out, then I'll have a good word with myself. So that's your to-do list? Yeah, so I cross uh, everything up as I do it. it's... And if I complete it, by the time, if the balloon's still floating, it just gets a good old pop. I love it. So it's a bit of a celebration for completing stuff, and, it's, and then you need that little kick up the backside, I think, just to... Well, I, we use Trello, yep. and I use it for a couple of weeks, yep. and then just as you say, it just disappears yeah. Yeah, into you the miss background. Notifications and I end, or, up, I end yeah. up writing on a piece of paper, yeah. I lose the piece of paper. Yeah. This is great, because yeah. you can't miss that, can you? No, exactly, it's, that's why I've positioned it right above me. I love where, that. Where I, sit. I think that's great. And then over here, I did spot something over here. These are where you're going to put all your orders. Yeah, these are all our jobs. Um, it's rather empty at the moment, but it's, um, we did move on from this one. This was what we had in the shop, um, yeah. which was great, but it was getting too small. Yeah. Um, so we've, that's why I had those. So can I get one out? Yep. Yeah. So what do you do? Explain to me, because again, this is process. So again, this is yeah, something so, that would be really so useful this to is one. This is a web order that's come in. Um, okay. So we print off the packing note, know exactly what it is. The minute it's print, printed off, the stock gets taken off, put into these um, Ziploc bags. So every job has its own Ziploc bag. Yeah. Um, if it's a big order, so for like the, the big organic art, which we did at the weekend, um, the order sheet will go still go in one of these so it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have a cardboard box or something with the stock in it, um, or loose, so where we've got like overflow one, two, and three. Yeah. On the order sheet, we'll note overflow for one. That's yeah. where everything lives, so it doesn't clutter up the job and the box for that day. So every day, you or an employee, yep. if, if or, or you, and then Jane, if yep. you're out doing something, she can come in. Yeah, so it's, and, no, it's and normally the day before, we'll go in okay. to tomorrow's draw, get everything out, um, prep it if we need to, if it's an airfield design, yeah. inflate it all there and then. Yeah. So I love that, Mike. I think that's absolutely great. And I'm sure they're going to be full very, very Hopefully. soon. Yeah. Now, one thing I have noticed that I wanted to ask you about is your T-shirt, but also I mm. see a couple of coats over yeah. there, and I've seen it on your van. The, the logo, consistency, it's all very good in the sign outside. What, what, what did you do? Why, why so, has that so changed? I mean, the, the logo, is, it's been an evolving thing um, since we first started. The first version of the logo had um, a butterfly on it with two faces, yeah. um, which was absolutely perfect when it was just a face painting business. Yeah. It then evolved into the next version when we added the balloons. Um, it went a bit more fun, a bit bright, a bit kid friendly. Yeah. Um, which was amazing at the time. We loved it. The van was all decked out in it and yeah. everything. And now with this move again, the business is transforming and we're looking for a different type of customer. Um, obviously, we're still going to do the kids' birthday parties and face yeah. painting and things, but I felt that we needed our brand to portray what we want to be doing. And what do you and want to be doing? And that's more into the corporate, corporate market side, and, yeah. and the, the sort of higher end parties and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I, I didn't think that the logo previously fell in that bracket yeah um, absolutely as much as i loved it yeah um so we decided we, we got the van last year um and the van at the time was the only color available it's a, like a gunmetal gray yeah um i wanted something different that mat matched our branding um but i couldn't get it um so now we've we my well, one of my instructions to my graphic designer was it needs to look good on the van the, yeah the van's gray so everything needs to follow that yeah which is why i've got the gray t-shirts the gray coats the, the gray is a really good corporate color though. yeah yeah so and gray cars are becoming very popular yeah. so i think gray is yeah. is a, a, a and good. it's a really easy hex code for when i'm recreating it it's just four 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 <laughs> <laughs> so whenever i'm doing any advertising things on it i can get it out straight away and i know one of the reasons you wanted solid colors yeah. Why was that? Uh, so obviously, in the previous one, it was there was lots of gradients, there was lots of layers, different colours here and there. Um, so I had to get everything printed. Um, yeah. I had to get um, vinyl printed. I had to get um, two obviously t-shirts come into a different bracket. But whenever I was doing anything advertising or that I wanted a big poster or something, I couldn't do it myself. Yeah. And having that power taken away from me was not nice. Um, for me as a um, as, a, as an artist and me as being tight 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> so one of my instructions to my web guy or my graphics guy was got to be able to recreate it myself. Yeah. On my cameo. Yeah. Um, and the first version that he sent out just absolutely smashed it. Brilliant. There was no. There was. There's one little tweak to font. Yeah. Um, that was the balloons bit. Yeah. And um, we just changed it to a different script. And once we got that, yeah, it was just, we knew that was the one, that's the way we needed to go. I think you've nailed it with a logo. Yeah. I really like it. I think it looks corporate, it looks yeah. professional, and, and people are more likely to take it seriously. And my so. daughter doesn't mind driving in the van with me now, because I don't have a great big cactus display on the side of the van. Yeah, yeah. and yet you, you've got to think <laughs> of what your children want. There's another thing I wanted to talk to you about was something you've told me about that you said was a requirement for here. Yeah. And that is a consultation area, isn't it? Yes. Um, I wanted to make the whole experience from ordering to delivery and then the party, one kind of one big celebration. Yeah. Because you, I think the beginning bit should be a, an experience for the customer. Absolutely. So we're in the shop, um, say for example, a lady came in to organize her wedding. Mm -hmm. um, we'd get five minutes into a, concert, into a conversation, someone else would come in the door, screaming kids, running around. Yeah. For me, you could see her face, she's not, it's not an environment that she was comfortable in organizing her biggest day of her life. Yeah. Um, so when we decided that we were moving away from the shop, we wanted something big enough where we could have a table and chairs, um, a coffee making machine, um, a bottle of fizz in the fridge, that yeah. sort of thing. So yeah. that when, when they come to plan their biggest day, it starts out in the I, right possible way. I think you're right. I think a lot of people like to have that, yeah. that whole, they want to be made to feel special. We all do. Yeah. And I think by having a place that you can come and sit down and have a chat yeah. and talk about your requirements, it's that special feeling, particularly if you're going to exactly. give them fizz. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really I, I stole that off my, my sister. My sister's a hairdresser. She's got a hairdressing business back in Brackley and she has a fridge with beers and wine in it. So when she's doing wedding hair or whatever, yeah. She can, the, the customer can have a nice glass of wine and yeah. relax, and that's kind of where I sort of got that from. That's really nice. Yeah, really different. Oh, they can still have tea, because well, you've got the best coffee, coffee yeah. from... Ikea. Ikea this coffee. Whole, this whole place has been kitted out with Ikea, <laughs> and the coffee is phenomenal. It was very nice. Yeah, ground, the little, the ground, little, ground coffee. And, yeah. yeah, and the little glass. Yeah. The little glass. Let's have a look at your consultation okay. area. So you say this is all Ikea? Yeah, Ikea. This, yeah, everything is these. Got nice little chairs there. You've got your, what's this? So this was part of the Qualitex Balloon Boutique. When we signed it on, you get the portfolio. Oh yeah. Um, so there's all sorts of balloon designs in there. This was fantastic for us. Um, it really helped us push sales in the shop. Yeah. Um, obviously now we're not uh, a shop. It doesn't need to be a feature of the balloon wall. Okay. That's why I've moved over here. I think it's handy having it ready for customers yeah. who are sat down and we can just dive to this ready. Yeah. That's better. Of course, you've got your coffee machine. We've got the back coffee machine. There. Yeah, yeah. Got your nice I mugs. Ikea mugs. Yeah, Ikea mugs. <laughs> uh, I was. Like, Ikea plant as well. <laughs> it? yeah. But it's a nice little space. Yeah. It's it's somewhere that, and I, I, it is that whole being made to feel special. It's, it's just something yeah, dedicated I, to them. My first consultation that I had in here was actually for this demi arch. All right. Um, the lady came in. Um, she's a, a friend of my sister's. Um, it was t uh, for her parents 40th wedding anniversary yeah. um so obviously ruby themed she wanted something red but not red in your face yeah. which is where things like the um, latex portfolio um on hand was really helpful yeah. in securing that job because when she came in i think in her mind she was thinking loose balloons or helium filled balloons scattered on tables yeah yeah um, with the help of this and i think the whole environment and the setting and sitting down and actually talking about what her requirements were this demi arch was born out of this conversation. So, and I guess as well, you can show people your work on a. Have you got an iPad? Yeah, or we've something? got you. Yeah, we have a tablet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you sit down there and show people. That's yeah. where they're really inspired because they might have been to your website. Just hit contact us. Yeah. Without looking at the gallery. Yeah. Um, things like that. So, Mike, you've obviously been to film with us before, and yeah. you've talked about your retail designs. Yeah. You're not in a retail environment anymore. But what designs are you playing with at the moment? Have you got any any um, hints or there's, tips? Well, there's a couple. Of, there's one around here that okay. I can, uh, it's obviously uh, with everything that's going on with helium shortages and price rises and so I'm coming up with more airfield designs. So this is obviously an airfield design. Um, I've not seen anything like it around. I don't know if, I don't know. So that, how, how did you do that? So 
the three bubbles, um, obviously all tied together with a 260 anyway. Yeah. Um, take the necks of the 260s and tie them all together into a cluster of three. This is simply six balloons. Okay. So two blue, two pink, two yellow. Uh, tied into clusters of threes and then all, uh, tied into duplets. Mixed in together like you if, as if you're going to make a topiary. Yeah. And then they just they nicely separate um, the three. So, then, so you get this sort of clover. So you can just design. tweak it yeah. and whatever. And then the actual balloon itself. So it's just on a not lamp ah, stand. Yeah. So it's a 646, 1646 um, stretched all the way down. I love that technique. Yeah. You get a really so nice, so clean. smooth yeah. finish. We used, yeah. to, we used to wrap it and yeah. it just looks horrendous. Yeah. Um, then we tried it with like ribbon and things and realised we've got those. I love the 646s yeah. for that. Uh, I love these colours as well. The yellow, pink and the blue I think really go quite yeah. well. Um, and basically that just sits. So you've got a nice, nice opening in the base. Yeah. It just basically sits on. So it's on like that. You can twist it around it, yeah, lock yeah, it in, lock or it you in. could um, get another 260 and wrap it and lock it all in. And you've got um, a little bit organic at the bottom. Little, yeah, that was, yeah. All right, that's cool. Now, Mike, one thing we should talk about mm -hmm. as I'm here is the upcoming training. You and Natalie are coming back. Yeah, we're doing so, the likes again. We yeah. had really good feedback from the last one. Um, it, it, was a, it was an awesome day, I have to was say. It was so much fun. I got, considering it was the first time you yeah. did it, and there's going to be things that you're improving on yeah. as well oh, definitely, yeah. since yeah. last time, but it was still, everybody loved it that yeah. was there. Everybody thought it was really good. And I think the finished effects. Yeah, they that, were, that tunnel was stunning. Yeah. Yeah. It was really innovative. It was brilliant. Yeah. I loved the, the, the arch that you did and the two different styles yeah. and the, the big, like you say, the, the doorway entrance yeah. was, was fantastic. So when is it? You remember? Uh, it is the 16th of September. Six. Monday 16th. That, that says to me, that's a, I think it's the 16th. <laughs> we'll put the details on the screen for sure. And how much is it? Uh, 95 ahead. 95, yeah. which which is really good. Yeah. And I, I, with sausage I, rolls. With sausage rolls, indeed, <laughs> and other things. So trying to be healthy, so I'll be eating the peppers and the hummus. Is the hummus? Might not be hummus. I'll be eating whatever's healthy. But yeah, it's it's great. So yeah, we'll put all the details for that on the screen. But I'm really excited about you guys coming along now. Yeah. And, and Natalie has obviously been doing quite a bit more training. Yes, yes and she's... yeah, I'm I'm really excited. Yeah. So it'll be at the the usual place. Well, Mike. Oh, the end of the show. Question of the <laughs> week, Mike. Have you thought of one? I haven't. Um, so as we're next to an airfield design, um, what's your favourite airfield design at the moment? Okay, yeah. Leave your comments or pictures on Facebook. I think you can put pictures on Facebook, but leave them down below on Facebook or on YouTube. Thanks very much, Mike. It's been lovely to see what you've done. I'm really excited no for problem. you. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. See you next week. Bye. Bye. -bye.